Welcome to MTME, Making Teaching Methods Easy, a five-episode podcast project by Carla Restivo and professors Libby Allison and Stephanie Langle. Our goal is to create a complete and understandable platform on music education methods and how to apply them. The MTME is dedicated to delivering actionable tips, strategies, and tactics to make teaching methods approachable by everyone. Each podcast contains author's bio and philosophy of education, his methods history, goal and fundamental elements, and video demonstration. Our guest for this third episode is Jacques Dalcroze. Let's start with a brief bio. Jacques Delcroze was born in Vienna in 1865 and died in Geneva in 1950. He was a Swiss composer and teacher, student of the Geneva Conservatory, then of A. Bruckner and R. Fuchs in Vienna, of L. Delibes and G. Faure in Paris. From 1910, he was a professor of harmony then also of Sofegio, at the Geneva Conservatory. Here he began to develop his own method of teaching, aimed at developing a precise sense of rhythm in students, accustoming them to translate sounds into movement. In 1906, he met Adolf Appia, a great supporter of his method, and he had his first volumes of work published under the title Method Jacques Dacros, pour la développement de l'instinct rhythmique, du sent auditif et du sentiment tonal en cinq parties. Jacques Dalcroze was later invited to Russia, where he met Stanislavski, Meyer Colt, and Gordon Craig. In 1910, he opened a school in Hellerou. In 1920, while Jacques Dalcroze returned to teach in Geneva, the school was transferred to Luxembourg, Austria, and put under the direction of Ernst Ferrand and Christine Barfuffel. It was closed in 1938 after the Nazi invasion. <music> Philosophy. The pedagogical philosophical vocation of Dalcroze aims at a musical education in which the body plays the intermediary part between the sounds and our pen serum, thus becoming the direct instrument of our feelings. Dalcroze's pedagogical method, through rhythm and musical metrics, aims to awaken the motor instincts and the imaginative facilities in the child. Dalcroze identified in the rhythm and in the musical metric the original element from which everything could come out, the primordial element of music. Through eurythmics, Dalcroze aims at the coordination of sensory perception with the education of the senses. Pedagogical practice aims at a harmonious body education through movement in order to free the child from the tensions that could hinder creativity. According to Jacques Dalcroze, education in rhythm and through the rhythm develops through the participation of the body, not only the musicality, the auditory facilities, and the awareness of the basic elements of music, tempo, measure, rhythm, singing, and expressive interpretation, but also many motor skills such as, for example, the coordination between the limbs, especially the one in the arms, which is a great help in learning the word eurythm from the Greek to define the way in which a melody or a piece of music is to be performed. Methods. The key to the Dalcroze approach is kinesthetic, movement. Eurythmics is a discipline that allows, through the gesture produced, to see the spiritual, original element in men. Eurythmics acts as a link between the arts of time and those of space, 
allowing what is partially perceptible to become visible movement. For Dow Crows, the theoretical study of rhythm must follow the practical one. Through this process, the student will be able to internalize the concept of time, adapting the pulsation he perceives from the outside to his internal pulsation. According to Dow Crows, relaxation exercises are the basis of all the exercises of the method as they allow the child to become aware of his body. Only successively, the work will be centered on the recognition of the difference between the various measures of the musical metric, initially walking the various times proposed and combining the movement of the arms with the accents. For Dow Crows, the body is in possession of a certain amount of natural rhythms intrinsically connected to the culture of belonging. The work on the Dow Crows' rhythm, one will come to understand that the practice of bodily movements evokes images to the mind. He began his experiments by having the students step to the music he improvised. Tools. The first tool is the body, thought as a mediator between sounds and internal pulse. The body can translate into physical movement the internal motion of a melody or a phrase, and it is helpful in memorizing the structure of a composition without singing it. Rhythmic, through which the body's ability to respond to the rhythm develops and allows us to learn with precision the musical language linked to the values of the notes, the metric and the phrasing. Solfege, which educates the voice and the melodic ear as well as rhythmic through itineraries of gestures, intonation, and writing through the study of scales, harmony, and theory. The study of solfege develops the auditory functions and the analytical faculties, the tonal instinct, and the harmonic sense. It aims to create, as far as possible, an interior audition, teaches to breathe, develops reading at first sight, transportation, knowledge of notation and theory. It is the stage of transition between the study of rhythm and that of improvisation. Improvisation, which through the vocabulary built up with rhythm and solfege, develops the possibility of expressing one's own creative and musical personality. Improvisation is a skill that encourages proactivity. around the room following the music. Who are the movements that you think are related to the mood of the music? You can watch, you can watch for a moment. Yeah? You can use all your body parts. You can use your hands, you can use your arms, you can move your head. You can use the whole space of the classroom. You can move your feet. Another song. 
song that is completely different. And I'm gonna ask you to do specific movements according to your feeling on the music. So I'm gonna tell you maybe like to move your right hand. But the way you move your right hand, right hand will be related to how you feel the music. So I'm not gonna tell you like clap your hands twice or snap your finger. I'm gonna just ask you move, I don't know, your right feet and you will feel how to move your right feet. So this is up. You can watch along the room for now. Listen to the music. How is this music? It's loud. It's fast, kind of, okay, do you listen a lot of instruments or few instruments? Few instruments. Could you move your right hand according to the mood of the music? Waltz when you hear the percussion and freeze when you hear other instruments. Loud or soft? Soft, soft.
the, the movement of the melody that I'm gonna sing for you. So open your hands. Ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you to the singer. Ready? Ready? <coughs> With that one? <laughs> Can you show me your special finger? Amazing. Okay. I'm gonna show you all these special fingers. For example, if I sing something like you see? The special finger is moved following the direction of the melody. According to what I want, okay? So let's try for a good one, for example. Ah, what happened to the sound? The sound went from down to up. Okay, but what about this? Good job. And if I sing something like while doing the movements with this, these fingers, okay? So I'm gonna sing it first, you repeat after me, okay? Thanks for listening to MTME, Making Teaching Methods Easy, a five-episode podcast project by Carla Restivo and professors Libby Allison and Stephanie Langle. If you want to know more, check out our YouTube page.